the many plants you grow indoor, the greater is your responsibility of keeping them alive and thrive. Welcome to Cashew Greens. My name is Marcelina. You go to source for all the things gardening and plant care. Today we are diving deep into a common concern that many of you have been asking about browning leaf edges and tips. If you have noticed this problem with all your plants and are wondering what is causing it, you are in the right place. So stick with me all the way towards the end of the video because we are going to cover from possible causes to effective treatment. Let's get to it. Browning leaf edges and tips is most common problem in tropical plants, especially those with high variegated leaves like Monstera albo, Syngonium albo, and some other plants that require high humidity level. So if you have this issue with your plant, the first thing to do is identify the symptom. Look at your plant and examine the leaves. Is it only affecting the edges? Or are there other parts of the leaves involved? Now keep in mind, browning can manifest from being soft to dry and crispy to yellowing and even burnt appearance. There are several factors contributing to the problem, but based on my experience troubleshooting leaf issue in plants, I can give you two major cases that are either directly or indirectly linked to browning. So here are the two cases and effective treatment coming up. All right, two major cases that are linked to browning leaf edges and tips. First is watering issue, second, humidity level. Now let's discuss each scenario and how they can lead to the problem. Let's begin with the watering issue. Watering practices can play a significant role to the overall health of your plant. And improper watering can stress the plant, causing the leaves to brown and interrupting their ability to function properly. Let's say I'm watering my syngonium, all right? And I'm going to give all of this water here. Now I am over watering because I provide more water that my syngonium requires. If I keep my plant or the pot submerged in water for so long, what will happen? The root system of this plant will start to, uh, to rot and decay. Now keep in mind decaying matter attracts pests and diseases and most of the problem death in plant is due to overwatering. So the result of over overwatering you end up a root rot, root suffocation because there is lacking of oxygen and nutrient deficiency because if you keep watering the nutrient in the soil will be leaching out. So most of the important nutrient is nitrogen and magnesium so if this element will be missing then your plant will start to begin to brown or yellowing on the leaves and so on all right so this is bad now if the plant is not receiving enough water it would be like under watering what will happen you will notice the leaves starting to dry uh, dry out and crispy, especially on the tips of the leaves. Some people said that it's better to underwater than overwater, which is uh, somewhat uh, okay with that, but mostly overwatering and underwatering produce the same result. Now, if it is underwater, the plant cannot, abs cannot deliver proper water nutrients to all parts of the tissue. So if there is not enough water during the transpiration, so you end up ab browning leaf edges and tips. Also, you end up a building up salt because if there is not enough water, salt leaves behind. So during the transpiration or evaporation, the salt will be on soil. Now this building up of salt in the soil interferes the plants taking, up, taking in 
CO2 or carbon dioxide. All right. So it is good to manage your watering. Now, if you ask me, how often do you water the plant? It depends. Some plants uh, need more water, while others maybe moderate. But mostly, uh, plant tropical plant they love water, especially pilodendron. They want to keep their soil moist, but not waterlogged. All right. No one likes to be wet the feet all the time. So how are you going to address the problem? Now there is a differences uh, browning leaf. I noticed it with my Thai constellation that the browning was a little bit of soft instead of crispy. This is due to uh, if you have that problem meaning that the plant is getting too much water and the cell cannot hold so it has to be get rid of. <laughs> Alright? So they remove that excess water and you end up a soft brown so how are we going to uh, prevent this problem here's the steps if you find that the browning is due to overwatering the first step is remove the damaged tissue and if it is significant take off the whole leaves all right because you don't want to have further uh, damage. Now, as you can see here, you notice, you see that? Now it's starting to brown and it's a little bit crispy. And the reason why? Because the plant is not getting enough water and it is dry. So this is underwater. But that's okay, we will take good care of it, all right? So again, the, the first step, cut the uh, the area just remove the browning and then the second step remove the plant from the pot check the root to ensure that uh, to see if how much damage from the root that's why the result of browning or yellowing then remove those uh, damaged tissue because you don't want to decay all right now, to provide our plant a healthy environment, I'm going to transfer this plant to a bigger pot because this is too small, this is 4 inch, and I'm going to transfer it in a 6 inch pot. To provide the plant, the root system, proper ventilation, I'm going to add another extra hose. So, this is a significant way to give extra ventilation to the root because if there is not enough ventilation what will happen the root will be twisting and you end up a root bound which is also another uh, result of browning leaf edges and tips because the plant cannot take up proper water nutrients all right now the next step after you have this you're going to provide good soil now plants uh, the, the health of your plant begins with good soil so if you guys need uh, ideal soil for your plant we have a blend that is specific for pilodendron or any, any plants that require good good uh, what is it good soil how to say that but anyway we will have the blend of soil you can check it out uh, check us your greens.com so i have this blend of soil and it has a little bit of mycorrhizae if you're familiar with mycorrhizae probably some of you are fam are familiar with mycorrhizae mycorrhizae is a beneficial fungus that is going to help your plant during transplant to limit the transplant shock and also helping the root system against pathogen so you might need mycorrhizae so this is the mix i have my bark here and i'm going to put this in the soil i put this in the pot so fill in the pot halfway 
oops sorry so just like that in the uh, you fill in the mid of the container and transplant the plant so this is root bound as you can see what you have to do is just loosen the root split them or if you can cut them you can you can so I'm just loosen, loosen the root here and sometimes uh, in the nursery they use this substrate the coconut core which is not good for for the plant because there is no nutrients so you have to provide it with soil that has good uh, nutrients as well as good drainage and how to say this <laughs> drainage and water retention so i place this plant here see that then i will fill in the rest of the soil Okay, so now it is filled in. So after you transplant your plant, you water, and I recommend to water from below just water halfway like let me show you here the the root of this plant is up here and root will seek water so the best way is instead of watering from the top i would water from below so you just put halfway a water this is enough for the plant to absorb water and then place your pot in in water the water will be absorbed and your plant will get a good amount of water now the other uh, advantage for watering from below so besides from uh, the root seeking the water down make it stronger and healthier also preventing the nuts from getting in because top the top soil will be dry because you only give uh, amount of water from the bottom all right so bear with me guys okay english is not my my uh, primary language but it's okay we will uh, we will explain this so everyone can understand can you understand me guys all right <laughs> okay so that is the proper way to provide this plant with better environment now again as I mentioned how often do you water the plant depends on the environment and if the environment is too dry then you have to uh, water it more often if it is too humid then you have to decrease your watering mostly winter month your water is less you don't want to water all the time because it is in dormancy and they are not really active now let's talk about humidity Humidity is not causing the problem directly, but it is indirectly linked to the issue. Now, as I mentioned, tropical plants love high humidity. Some uh, like moderate and can adjust the uh, humidity level in your home. And pilodendron, calathea, and anthurium, syngonium have the same uh, humidity uh, requirements. So the best way to adjust the humidity, give your plant at least 60%. Higher than 60 or above that range, it might be too humid. Now, if it is too humid, it takes a while for the soil to dry out. So if it is longer period to, for the plant to dry, then you have a tendency that the pest would attack your plant and causing that browning, all right? And also, it if it is humid environment the building up of salt is more likely so try to avoid overwatering or underwatering so adjust adjust your water watering management 
so that is the most important if you don't have humidifier i suggest to buy or invest a humidifier instead of watering by misting the leaves or put placing a bowl next to it it is not really adequate to increase the humidity besides you don't know how much humidity level your plant is getting if you don't have a humidifier so get a humidifier and sit in the autopilot so you know that how much you know humidity the plant can get and it is really easy and convenient for you so instead of spraying or misting the leaves every day especially if you have so many plants inside your home i have more than 500 plants inside the greenhouse and inside you know inside our home so i have humidity so here i have fish tank so it helps it helps that humidity level so i right now the box says 65 percent and that is best all right and make sure that the temperature inside your home is ideal if you love your uh, if you love warmer like 75 that is best for the plant so most tropical plants prepare uh, temperature between 65 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit okay I hope I mentioned everything so again now here's the thing if you your plant is underwater don't transplant because you're adding too much stress what you have to do just water right away soak in water for a couple hours until the water is absorbed by the roots now fertilization don't fertilizer when you are doing transplant and if you do i would say just put a little bit but more more likely i don't fertilize oh what is that i don't fertilize when i transplant the the plant i use this all purpose which is 202020 20, 20, and i uh, fertilize my plant daily so you can schedule you can do periodically or daily but if you do daily just put like a little bit in a gallon of water maybe one teaspoon of 20-20 uh, mix in a gallon of water and then water the plant this is also uh, helping the plant to uh, boost boost them and produce uh, healthy foliage so if you have plant like like for example you buy plant from the nursery and it is looking good then when you bring home and take good care of the plant it is not as good as you know as opposed to when they are in, in that in the nursery because what happened they provide the plant a continuous supply of nutrients so give just give a little bit of 2020 and water the plants and then your plants will do fine all right <laughs> So I hope I mentioned everything again, uh, monitor your watering, monitor your humidity because that is the major cases why the plant is browning leaves and causing too many problems. Now if you notice that the plant, if it is not caused by overwatering and underwatering or humidity, if the cause is due to infestation, you will see that the plant will be wrinkled or the browning will be the whole entire leaf so if that is the case treat the plant right away don't wait until the infestation spread to neighboring plants so i use asatec plus here so this is my product and i recommend for you guys to uh, try this uh, product it kills again it kills 200 bugs in the garden so i use this for all almost 10 years now and most of the people here they use this Asiatic Plus. So you can get it on eBay or in our site cashewgreens.com and also you can get it here if you live close by in if you are near North Ridgeville. So you can just message me Marcelina I need a bottle and I have extra here. So what you have to do when you use Asiatic Plus if you have an infestation going on like you have mealybugs or spider mites you treat your plant in seven days straight don't miss any a day so leave your plant spray from the bottom and top as well as on the soil surface okay and you do it you do it every single day for seven days straight 
once it is controlled you maintain your uh, your spray maybe once every three weeks just give a squirt just to you know to ward off those this pest so again now now uh, other thing if you this is $24.99 and if you want the asa take with lower price if you are a member of cashewgreens.com you only get this $19.99 so what you have to do go to Casio greens and get the Asatec Plus for the original price at $24.99. Then once you are a member, then you will receive one bottle a month of Asatec for the price of $19.99. And you can cancel your membership at any time. So if you don't want uh, Cashew Greens to supply you uh, Asatec Plus. Again, treat your plant as soon as there is infestation going on or there is problem on the leaves because if you don't your plant basically your plant will die if it is too much all right if the problem is out of control if, if i did not mention uh, most of the problem that you guys want to learn from just comment below this video write the comments and i will discuss that later on in my next video so i hope i hope this video helped you guys and if you have been subscribed to this channel please subscribe join the uh, community and also don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified every time i release new video especially the information such as this okay thank you for watching marceline at cashewgreens.com see you next time peace out